Hey, man. Come on in. You said you wanted to show me something before we started tonight? Yeah, I came home to this after Christmas. What in the... Some new video game you, you purchased? No. You remember that weird package I got last week? Yeah. It has somehow connected itself to my computer. And apparently it put a virus on your computer, I, I think? She says she's not a virus. Say what? She? For lack of a better term. Okay, secondly, can you understand her? You can't? No, all I hear is these beeps and boops. Well, I can understand her. I guess I'll have to translate for Deedlet. Deedlet? You gave it a name? She named herself. Apparently, she really connected to her in my copy of Record of Lodos War. Record of Lodos War? Like, that was an amazing, amazing series, most of what I watched it. Mm -hmm. But what do you mean by translate? We're still going to record in the same situation? We don't really have much of a choice. We need to get through all of Digimon Adventure Try before February. Well, yeah, but what about... Deedlet? Yeah! She says she won't do anything to mess up what we're already doing. And you honestly believe her? Honestly, I don't know, but we've got a show to do. If nothing else, this will just be an interesting footnote in the history of the podcast. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess we ought to record this thing, then. Another episode of the Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who, well, he just finds Meikumon just so darn cute. Welcome, Jacob. Well, she does look like a plush. <laughs> yeah. Why? Thank you. Let me introduce our co-host, a man who who just wants a donut. Welcome, Drew. Man, what did jelly donuts ever do to you? I don't know. <laughs> they're they're tasty. <laughs> if 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 that's your thing. <laughs> If that confused you, it's because for some reason it's still going long, even though I told it not to. Yep. A little bit stuff. weird, but either way. It should be fine on the final recording. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> trivia time. That's where we were. Yeah, <laughs> trivia time. There we go. I got just completely confused myself. That's, that's pretty much normal. <laughs> uh, okay, so last week, our trivia time, uh, we know we posted it. It disappeared. <laughs> But it, it went into the digital world, apparently. It got infected. Apparently. And we need a vaccine. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, are we, our, episode, our question from last week was, due to the fact that Digimon Adventure Try uses primarily the audio soundtrack. Yes. With the exception of, of course, the theme song being Digimon are back again. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of times throughout the, throughout the, sh the movie, both movies, actually, I can mm -hmm. say now, in which... Uh, uh, you can hear an instrumental version of the Japanese theme song to Digimon Adventure. Yeah. What is the name of that theme song? I think, to, if memory serves correctly, I think it's Butterfly? It is Butterfly. Boom. It is indeed Butterfly, which Josh answered correctly before it all disappeared into the Digiverse. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah. That's uh, that's our trivia for this week. Stay tuned for the end of the episode in which, where we will ask another trivia question about our next movie. Yeah. So, Jacob, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Christmas has come and gone. Uh, so, there again, Merry Christmas to all. And I hope you are... Oh, okay. Okay. I, I guess I need to touch on this now. Yeah. Uh, that sound you heard... Was, uh, we apparently have an upgrade to our system, a new AI of sorts. Yeah. And she has a tendency to come in now. Uh, that was our AI, uh, Deedlet. She said, uh, Merry yeah. Christmas to y'all, too. Yeah. So, yeah, Merry Christmas to you all. Yeah. So, we are approaching the new year with, uh, New Year's resolutions. I've got a few of my own. I don't know if Drew does or not. Uh, I'll make something up before we have to okay. say something. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got a few things I'm working on the pipeline. No, so, so stay tuned for that. Uh, 
it's it's been it feels like it should be thursday when it's tuesday it's one of those weeks so the the run up to the new year is always kind of interesting because everything slows down and then everything just goes like a like a a bull into a china shop very end of the year the very end of the days to you it feels like a thursday yeah to me it feels like a monday Hmm. but yet thursday is friday right Time is all wibbly wobbly for me this week. I got you. Totally get it. Yeah, I'm trying to get some last minute art projects out of the way for for Patreon and what have you for the new year. So if you're part of our Patreon, uh, stay tuned for that. It should come out, you know, towards the end of the year. So check that out when it comes out. And plus, if you want to uh, check out the art for... Um, for the cellcast, please go to patreon.com slash cellcast and go to the $5 or $10 tier where you can get exclusive art from this guy and other little Patreon exclusives, which we are working on. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And if you are welcome and for those who are coming into our Patreon, welcome to the cell nation. So that is all I have been working. That is all I've been working on and doing. What's up? Yeah, minus minus Christmas, going to my parents' yeah. place, uh, having fun. I have to ask, what did you get for Christmas? <sighs> there, there's a part. Uh, let's see, tools, tools. Um, one thing I don't want to mention on air because my one of my brothers decided to give me something that he knows I do not drink. <laughs> he decided to give it to me anyways. <laughs> So L- little little bottles of s- schnapps, kind of yeah, Guinness, he, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying stuff until you <laughs> admit that it's pro- he, vodka. My, my my brother bought me little bottles of alcohol. Okay, to be like alcohol. so 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 now I have a little a um a mini bar, quite literally a mini bar. It's like thanks, Jim Bob. <laughs> so. I mean, like it's it's like okay, it's, yeah. Either way, so that was that was funny, in in a sense, it was fun. I wound up passing on the couch on Friday, not because I drank. Don't get me wrong, I didn't drink. I was just too tired, fell asleep, and got up on Sunday, drove home, uh, went to church, and went and hung out at Chase's at the end of the night, and yeah. So it's been an interesting week so far. How about you? I had a good Christmas. Yeah. Um, I went and visited the family back right. back home. We had a Christmas uh, a, a Christmas thing on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. We had a Christmas dinner on Christmas Day. Oh. and then we had it was another family thing on Christmas after Christmas. What do you call that? The day after Christmas, the twenty sixth, twenty sixth, or as we call it, in my family, Aunt Carol's birthday. Ah. Oh. Speaking of Aunt Carol's birthday, it was also your birthday. Yes, it was. I, I, I and unfortunately, I didn't go, do make an awesome art project to give you <laughs> like you gave me. Which, by so, the way, I do have the frame for that thing. I just oh, haven't framed awesome. it yet. Awesome. It's sitting over there in that big white bag. Ah, um, gotcha. Along with another couple other frames. I gotcha. But, um, yeah, I got uh, season one of Star Trek Lower Decks. Mm-hmm. And then I got a bunch of King Kong and Godzilla movies. Mm-hmm. I got a Mandalorian cup, a cool. mug, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, a uh, wooden uh, carving of a cruise ship. As mem- as mem- memory, it's up there by uh, well, by Deedlet, <laughs> the other Deedlet, <laughs> up there by the record of Lodos War Blu-ray. Oh. Interesting. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and I can't see it because of my my head. <laughs> yeah, it's behind. Yeah, and that's and they can't see it because it's behind your head. <laughs> Not that it matters. Uh, even though my dad did carve that. Thank you, Dad. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and then I, I also got a snow cone machine, which <laughs> any other winter, right, would seem strange. But considering right. it was eighty degrees Christmas Day, yeah. And Texas I, weather, right? And I wore shorts to Christmas. And it's like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll fit. That'll work. <laughs> also got a uh, 12 pack of Coca Cola. Of course. Which is fine with me. Yeah. Uh, and then some gift cards. You know how that goes. Oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, 
other than that, I mean, I had a pretty good week. I had a good four days off. Lucky. <laughs> hey, one day you might get maybe a, you might be maybe. able to get a job that maybe. Will, actually doesn't force you to work on Christmas. Or Christmas Eve. I wasn't working on it. Technically, so. I never worked on Christmas either. Right. But I, you may you might one day get a job that gives you more than just one or two holidays. That is true. That is so but true. But anyway. Maybe Anyways. a couple long weekends. Right. Maybe. Actually, give you weekends. Yeah. Well, I have weekends off. Yes. But I mean, guaranteed everyone has the weekend off. Ah, gotcha. You know, that sort of thing. One I'm of those. I, I'm maybe, most, maybe one of those days or willing. I'm mostly picking at you. I got you. I know I can get away with it. <laughs> Until you tell me not to. Anyway, um, other than that, I had a pretty good week. Yeah. Uh, Did you get a chance, besides this film, to watch anything while we were on vacation? Yes, I did. While I was on vacation. Yeah, while you were on vacation. uh, So I, you know, from Christmas, I came back uh, from my parents' place, came back to where where we live, and uh, went to church, like I said before. And then went over to our friend Chase's house where we normally do Bible study. Yeah. But knowing that most people were going to be out of town. So we decided just to hang out and chill and just, you know, fellowship a little bit. So we were trying to figure out something to watch. And one of our. And you watched more Black Adder. No, we didn't watch a Black Adder. Oh. Okay. So we, we were. Chase and I were trying to be more. Uh, Worldly. Huh? Worldly. Uh, inclusive. Yeah, inclusive. Inclusive with the, one certain, of our. A certain knucklehead was there, I heard. Uh, Hezekiah was there. That's not the knucklehead. I no, heard. he wasn't there. Ah, I, I, then he must not have made it. Yeah. From what I heard. Yeah. We're referring to another. Yes. <laughs> associate of, associate, associate of my hours. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so we, uh, a friend of ours, Hezekiah is not a huge fan of anime, anime as a genre, which we want to respect. Which is fine. That. Which fine. Is fine. We like, probably, He's wrong, but it's fine. Not for himself. Right. Is wrong in general. <laughs> but, Hezzy, we love you. <laughs> but either way, so we, we decided to watch a little bit of Disney Plus, and we wound up watching one episode, which we're like, why are we picking just one episode from Darkwing Duck? Because <laughs> when there's trouble, you call DW. Exactly. I kept telling Darkwing me, Darkwing like, Duck. <laughs> Let's get dangerous. <laughs> so Sorry. we so we wound up watching just a random episode from uh, Darkwing Duck. Drew was like, oh, Drew. I wasn't there. I know. I get you and Chief mixed up all the time for some How? reason. I have no he idea. He talks more than I do, <laughs> and he's a lot skinnier than me. True. And taller. And taller. <laughs> hey, never mind. I'm not going to go there. I mean, if you put us next to each other, we look like the number 10. <laughs> Touche. Touche. <laughs> So either way, we, we watched an episode of Darkwing Duck, and uh, and then we watch, um, out of all the films, because we're trying to figure out some Christmas movie, and the the movie that comes up, and it's set around Christmas. Now, great, it's not during a Christmas party or anything. It's just set around Christmas. Die Hard is not on Disney+. Plus. No, it's not. It wasn't Die Hard. I was pushing for Die Hard, but we didn't watch it. I you would be, <laughs> but it's not on Disney+. Plus. And it's a Christmas movie. I've had this discussion. <laughs> we have. <laughs> it's set at Christmas time, and that's the only reason I let it go. <laughs> let it go. I have, I'm done holding it back anymore. You already know my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, no, we actually watched uh, our Iron Man 3. Ah, that is a Christmas movie. Yes, it is. It, it's set around Christmas. Yes. It, there's not really Christmas parties, per se, but it has Christmas spirit in the air. Hey, there is a giant bunny rabbit that would be that, more Easter. That is, yeah, that's true. But that's true. But, gift. but this was the first time I watched this film in a very long time, and I was yeah. like, wow, this is a lot better movie than I remember it. That was my feelings on Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. <laughs> right. It's, it's, always inter- it's always interesting revisiting a film you haven't seen in a while. Oh, yeah. And it's like, wow. Be like, this is a movie that's far better. It's got a better story than I remember. And there's a lot of people who go out there just give this movie just crap. People are stupid, though. I, I agree. It's very much a, like me. I mean, it's not Thor the Dark World. I have a, I have a fondness for that film. I, I enjoyed it. And I enjoy- that's fine. Yeah. There are people who like Incredible Hulk, too, even though I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. Agreed. 
But I'm just saying those two plus Captain Marvel are battling it out for my least favorite Marvel movie. Ooh. But I, I didn't say worst. I said right. least favorite. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. That tells you how much esteem I put all the Marvel movies in. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So, yeah, we watched Iron Man 3. It's a really good movie for those who hate it. I'd be like, I know some people who hate it simply because, oh, it's not the Mandarin. <laughs> oh, this. And rah, rah, rah. Go watch Shang-Chi. He's over there. Exactly. Apparently. I, yeah. You've not watched it yet. No, I haven't. I watched it on Disney Plus. <laughs> it's on there. You ought to. Yeah. I will get around to it. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. That and Eternals. Yeah. Eternals and Hawkeye. on in Hawkeye. And Loki. And Loki. And we'll, the rest well, we're of We're going to eventually do what if. So, I mean, yeah, eventually we'll get around to watching well, what watched if. watched a lot of that one already. I did. So. So either way, that is all I've been watching so far. What have you been watching? Well. Before you came over here. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to mention what you saw me watching when you came over here. Because I've seen the Star Wars <laughs> Holiday Special once before. Uh. <laughs> so who knows why I'm subjecting myself to it again. But um, I watched a Rift Tracks. You know what Rift Tracks is, right? Yes. It's essentially, mystery, it's from the people who made Mystery Science Theater 3000. Mm-hmm. But they do stuff more than just, you know, really old cheesy movies. They'll do new cheesy movies. Yeah. They did Iron Man, for crying out loud. They yeah. did, I've, they've already done The Rise of Skywalker. Wow. I haven't watched that one yet. Uh. But they also do some more rare stuff that you know has not seen the light of day probably for a good reason uh i watched one they did on fun in balloon land okay i feel like i may have lost a brain cell or two okay <laughs> it was bad oh <laughs> uh, okay gotcha. also watched a rift tracks short uh collection of shorts uh called uh from 2019 that they mm-hmm. uh, filmed live at Sketchfest San Francisco, I think. Nice. You know, before COVID. Uh, yeah. Back when they still had it. And I think Weird Al was on that one. No, that was a different one. I didn't get to him. So yeah. never mind. Um, but yeah, I watched that and uh, finished Hawkeye. Yeah. The there is When you get to Hawkeye, there is an, a- an after credit scene. Mm-hmm. It does not tease anything coming up but you need but i laughed my full head off for the entire three minutes of it wow it's three minutes no sorry five minutes five minutes it's a five minute after credit scene and i laughed my full head off and i can't tell you why because it will spoil it okay have you watched the first episode yet? no i have not watched anything i can't tell guy. you a cotton picking thing right and i probably shouldn't uh spoil stuff on our show anyway Exactly. But there's... Let's, let's just say there's something hilarious on there that relates back to Avengers. Okay. Mm. And possibly Hamilton. Okay. Now I'm intrigued. Yes. It's in the vein of Hamilton, I'll say. Okay. That's as far as I'm going to go into that. But I laugh my full head off for five minutes. And if you go to the soundtrack, they've got the whole thing on there. Wow. <laughs> But anyway, and also yeah. that's a good, good show. I suggest watching Hawkeye anyway. Also watched an episode of Star Trek Discovery. I enjoyed that for the most part, although it's still a little... Uh, it's not as good as other Star Treks. That's all I'll put on that. Yeah. But I am watching that still. And uh, while visiting my parents, I watched some more Rawhide and some more uh, Wagon Train. I think I've decided I like Rawhide better than Wagon Train. Okay. They're just different shows. I gotcha. But I think Rawhide has the better characters. Okay. But anyway. Yeah. So speaking of bad movies, I wanted to plug a quick... You wanted to plug a bad movie? Uh, not a bad movie. A podcast talking about bad movies. Oh, yes. Technically, a semi-part of our podcast network yes. over at uh, uh, Culture Box. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to uh, listen to a couple of guys and gals talk about uh, bad movies... And their opinions on them go to uh, the bottom shelf. I believe they're available on Spotify mm-hmm. and other. They're available pretty much everywhere you found this show. Yeah, exactly. Pretty so, much. So go show them some love. They're really good. Uh, Dallas from Geek Devotions mm-hmm. on there. 
and, along with uh, Kevin the Dapper Man and John Har, you uh, playing games with strangers. Ah, gotcha. Can you tell I actually listened to the show? Yeah. I liked their uh, Mars Attacks episode. Oh my gosh. That was a funny one. Yeah. But uh, other than that, that's pretty much what I've been watching. Cool. What do we got in the news? What do we got in the news? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, Disney Plus dropped their... Um, uh, I'm going to start with that. Disney Plus dropped what they're going to be uh, putting out for the at the for the end of this month and the beginning of the first in 2022. So mm-hmm. Disney kicks off the holiday festivities with Christmas, obviously, as I was referring to oh, Christmas, of Christmas and New Year's. Uh, starting this Friday, December 24th, when Disney Animation. Uh, launches um, Enchanto on their services. So if you didn't get Enchanto... Uh, D-Lit says the name of it is Encanto. Oh, Encanto. Not Enchanto. Okay. Encanto. Thank you, D-Lit. So eventually I'm going to watch it and eventually we'll do it as a review on the pot, on the SoCast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So fine. that that is currently out. Uh, apparently they are doing, they've done another Ice Age film. Another. Well, I mean, it was a, they were doing a uh, special coming up. Yeah. Like a one hour special that's technically being made by Disney Toon Studios. Mm. Yeah, apparently this is the last remnants of Blue Sky's work. Yeah. So they, yeah, Uh, it's a new animation prehistoric ramp of uh, the Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild coming to Disney Plus on January 28th. Mm-hmm. Uh, continue the hilarious esca- escapes of the Sub-Zero heroes from the Wild Successful Global franchise. All right. So going into the more broader news. All right. So everybody knows what Fandango P- is. Or from yes, the most part, Fandango. I'm, just... I'm aware of Fandango. Okay. So Fandango came out with their. I saw those stupid paperback commercials before many a movie. All right. So they have released their most anticipated theatrical movies for 2022. Okay. All right. So obviously, so what question for you, what is the movies you're most interested in coming, coming out in 2000? Most interested in coming out. Yes. Well, I know we've got death on the Nile coming out in Mm -hmm. February. Mm hmm. Top Gun Maverick, I know, is in May. Doctor mm. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is also in May. Mm-hmm. Uh, good night. I know there's some more on there mm-hmm. on the list, but I can't think of it right this second. Okay, so for most anticipated anime animation or family films, uh, number one is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Yeah, Spider Verse. Yeah. Yeah, that's I was utterly shocked you didn't say that one. <laughs> How much you love that film? Yes, love that and film? I do love that film. Don't get me wrong. Yes, but for whatever reason, Across the Spider Verse is one of those movies I've carp- compartmentalized and set far out because I know what it is. It's because I already know I'm going to go watch it. Yeah. So I'm I've already locked my hype away until that time. I got you. So I it didn't you. even cross my mind. All right, so Lightyear coming out uh, yeah, June seventeenth. That's going to be good too. Minions: The Rise of Gru is, on July first will probably be only okay. Yeah, uh, one I'm actually looking forward to because I've actually had the time during a of retreat. Course, of course, a lot of this we are actually going to talk about first week of February too. Yeah, but anyway, continue. Uh, a movie that I was not expecting to enjoy. I got able to. I was able to watch the first two installments of this uh, film franchise or the trilogy. Actually, I was like, "Wow, this is really good." I really want to watch the this third film coming out in 2022, and that would be Fantas- Fantastic Beasts: The Secrets of Dumbledore coming out on ah. April 15th. Because there again, I I've I've loved the Harry Potter ever since I you know watched I think the third film and started watching reading the books and watch all the movies and I've, I've read, I, I'm all, not a Potter head. Like some people yeah. are I've not read, like, yeah, I've read all the books. Yeah. Cannot get into the movies. Oh, uh, okay. That I don't happens. know what it is. Other than, that happens. Other than maybe it was one of those things where I probably should have watched the movies first and then seen what the books added. And then maybe I'd have better. Right. But I'm still going, sitting there going, where's the poltergeist? Where's Peeves? <laughs> he should be here. They're leaving so much out of this to cram it into a two-hour film. This is... Eh, okay, anyway. 
All right. So in fifth spot, which I, I'm after watching the trailer for this particular movie mm -hmm. uh, that dropped like I think a couple of weeks ago or like two weeks ago, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog two coming out April eighth, and we will definitely be doing oh, re yes. a reaction to that. That was with freaking it, amazing with Idris Elba as Knuckles. Yes, and uh, you need to p p pick up the phone because i called it <laughs> you did you did we'll see how it goes uh, according to the trailer he hit it you I know have, he I hit the nail just right on the head and i'm happy <laughs> and it was uh, really the only place the way the story could go but anyway right so going into further news uh box office for this christmas weekend was smashing or amazing or spectacular or it's sane to its heart's delight so perhaps superior superior possibly uh Uncanny. Yeah, uncanny. I'm just bringing up random Marvel <laughs> adjectives to refer to No Way Home. Yeah. Uh, so Spider-Man No Way Home. And to mention this movie right now in theaters, granted, if you want to hear our reaction to this film, is has that dropped on Patreon yet? Yes, it is on Patreon. All right. So if you want to go hear our honest opinions about Spider-Man's Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, go to Pay our... Pay us 10 bucks. Yeah. Go, you go to Patreon... Uh, uh, sign up for the thin dollar tier, and you can hear our very exclusive thoughts on Spider Man No Way Home on our special Patreon episode that's going to come out every other two weeks, apparently. A sellout, yeah, sellout, yeah, because for 10 bucks, we will definitely sell out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's something we've been working on. So I hope you guys enjoy if you want to, you know, support us financially there. And if you if not, you can go support us on our uh. Our Redbubble uh, store, Rebel store, and go buy mer merchandise there. Buy, our, buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt. Buy a mug. Buy a sticker. It's all the same logo. Yeah, exactly. I'm surprised you haven't bought your socks yet. I'm not sure they'll fit my big feet. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I right. have very large feet. Because we had to specifically put that one on there because you were going to buy socks. Yeah. Because you you like crazy socks. Yes, I do. All right, so either way, either way. With, with that plug out of the way. All right, so Spider-Man No Way Home uh, has hit the global whopping of $1.05 billion, mm -hmm. making it Sony's number two film of all time. Uh, uh, the film, which has uh, No Way Home, which has $1.1 billion. That's nuts. Uh, so, yeah, it'd be like... This movie has just busted records. It'll probably continue to bust records. So, yeah, if you haven't watched Spider-Man No Way Home, go watch it. <laughs> that almost goes without saying. Yes. Exactly. Apparently, D-Lit agrees. How did you see it? Yeah. You haven't even left this. You just showed up here the other day. I don't even want to know. Don't tell me. Okay. You, I, mean, I gotta figure out how we, how she talks. <laughs> I don't understand it. I hear the beeps and boops like you do, but somehow I understand it. I don't get it. Okay, then. This is all crazy. Yeah, agreed. This is a crazy What? Why did you let a virus it's on your computer? <laughs> she's not happy you keep calling her a virus. In fact, she's crying now. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, D-Lit. She says, uh, uh, she says, apology accepted. All right. Good deal. Moving on. All right. So, uh, a film that a film series we have not touched on yet, but the, the movie sing, uh, came out a couple of years ago. We'll eventually get around to reviewing that. Yes. And Sing two is currently in theaters. Yes, it is. So this movie uh, is by universal and illumination. Uh, has managed to hit six uh, sixty four point eight million dollars in the box office. Uh, I don't know if that's good or not. That doesn't sound very good at all. Now, granted, when you're going against Spider Man, you know Spider Man No Way Home, which is breaking box office records, and you got Little Sing Two, you're like, this yeah, is, it's gonna is, go hump. It's gonna go with Spider Web, and it's like when disappear. Alvin and the Chipmunks Three Chipwrecked came out next to Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Oh yeah, it's about that dumb. It, it, got, it, got, it got blown away by you know the Millennium Falcon that went into hyperdrive. Yes, <laughs> hyperspace. All right, so uh, right now in the box office, right now, uh, Spider-Man: No Way Home 
as like I said before, is generated in this week alone, uh, $81.5 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, Singh right now is sitting at number two with 30, uh, $28.8 million. The Matrix Re- Resurrection, Resurrections by Warner Brothers, is sitting at uh, 22.5. And Enchanto by Disney. Encanto. Encanto. Sorry. Encanto. Encanto by Disney uh, has uh, reached total uh, within five weeks of $88.3 million. All right. So that is all I have for, for info and stuff. All right. We need to jump then into our spoiler free section. Yes. Of uh, our review of uh, Digimon Adventure Try Part 2 Determination. Mm Mm-hmm. He let's stop. They they can't understand you, and I can't translate that much. I know you enjoyed the film, uh, and I know you felt good. You, you had you had some feelings for some of the characters, especially some of the Digimon. But unfortunately, yeah. I can't. Unfortunately, I can't really translate your all that much of your thought feelings into the show. I'm sorry. Okay. But uh, Jacob, if you could go ahead and tell us what your th- feelings were. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I was. You know, it's okay. You lead in from uh, Reunion, which was a really good movie. And you get into this film, it's like, oh, okay, we're kind of going to, oh, we're doing this. And then, oh, we get this big attack. And then on the very end, it's like, oh my gosh, what happened? <laughs> I mean, like, obviously, you can see something coming. It's yeah. like, you have like this a character who we thought was this pops up and it's like, what the crap is this character doing here? Um, I just want to point out that, uh, you, you know how sometimes when I'm researching, I sometimes run across stuff I wish I didn't see. Right. This was part of, this was the only thing that was in the trivia section and I had to leave it out and it re- re- deals with that character. Yeah. I left it out because it had nothing to do with this particular. Yeah. It has to do with the second, part. the other, the third the later part. part. Yeah. So, the third part of the film. I'm just saying. Yeah. So. We get this, and it's like, also, whoa, okay. Also, that that's may, interesting. That may not have been actually him. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll get, get to that, that when we get there. there. Yeah. So, yeah, and then you get the 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 big finale of this film. It's like, whoa, okay. Oh crap, you went there. Why? It's like, okay, let's 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 bring back all the trauma from uh, Digimon Tamers all back to forefront with this one. It's like, ow, Tam- that hurt. Tamers is the card game, though. And I know. That, don't you mean the end of season one with, uh, when, uh, Gatomon joined the team and, uh, Wizardmon? Ken- Wizardmon. I couldn't think of his name. And Wizardmon, Wizardmon's, uh, demise. Demise. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> this, this is more kind of. It doesn't really spoil much. No, it doesn't. It doesn't it be like a, a series that's over 20 years old. Yeah. 21, 22 years old now, but either way, nuance. Yeah, spoiler alert. T- spoiler T- alert. Ty dies at the end of this movie. What? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> anyways. Anyways. <laughs> anyways um, I thought really enjoyed this movie so much. I, I was so much in shock what was going on. I was like, oh my gosh, this got real. And so I literally, I finished the film. It's like, okay. I'm watching this. I'm watching the third one right now. <laughs> I was well, like, I, I would I, have, but it was time to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I wound up watching uh, uh, Digimon Adventure Try uh, Confession, the third one after that, mm-hmm. because it was like, oh my gosh, what happens next? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh yeah, be like this. This movie is is the bomb. It's like wow. And there, there's so many great scenes in this movie. It's not even funny. So it's like, yeah, definitely. I enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I, I can't wait to when we review confession and then going forward mm-hmm. to seeing what, you know, goes on from there. Cause I know something was going on. I was like, Oh my gosh. Cause I, I'll, I'll get there when I get there. Anyway, what is yours? Spoiler free thoughts. I, really do like how 
this movie kind of this feels like I, so. So the first one, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to my point here, but my the first movie very much felt like a modern style anime movie that obviously had connections to previous Digimon stuff, but was kind of still modern. Yeah, this felt like a return to form from the show because you had this stupid little comedy that just comes up out of nowhere for no good reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do still have a lot of good drama and a lot yeah. of stuff that makes you go, holy crap. I was not expecting that. Yeah. But then it's followed up by, uh, scenes of all the rookie forms eating snacks. <laughs> My gosh. That's and weird. yeah. A, so, uh, a cat trying uh, pull it, uh, causing another cat to have a heart attack Back because of how cute it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh my gosh, that scene. Yeah, that that entire scene that is entire hilarious. Section is funny. But that, but that's the thing is that scene would not have appeared in the last movie. Yeah. at all. It was no. not the tone that first. No, movie it wasn't. Was going for. No, it wasn't. This one is like, yeah, we have gone back to Digimon. We are literally, that was just the setup. Now Digimon is surely back again. Yes. Because this is what I remember from the show. Yeah. It's goofy. It's, it does, I mean, thank goodness that, uh, oh shoot, what is the, is he's Digimon? Um, Tintomon. Tintomon. I don't know, I couldn't think of that. But when, uh, the, the thank, I'm sure the animators love the fact, or the, the American, the people doing the localization, love the fact that Tintomon has no moving mouth. Because then they could just have him say whatever the crap he wants. Right. And he says some of the funniest lines oh, yeah. throughout this entire thing. Mm-hmm. And then you also got like, uh, you, you got a lot of good character building in this too, mm-hmm. between uh, Joe and Mimi. Oh, and yes. This, which oh, we'll yeah. get more into. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, this is a great continuation. It is starting to, inter- to answer some of the questions I was wanting it to answer mm-hmm. last time. Yeah. And it's also, uh, we're, we're getting to know more of the shady government organization. Right. So, which, yeah, we'll get into that here in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the film. I'm looking forward to part three. Mm-hmm. I did not jump immediately into part three because like I said, I had to go to bed Yeah. last night because <laughs> it was late. Mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, it's a, it's a great, great, um, sequel. Mm-hmm. Or continuation, really. It's yes. not really a sequel. Yeah. Great continuation from the first one. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah. So, yeah, join us on the other side of the bumpers, and we will get to spoiling this thing. Don't forget that you can download... <laughs> download? Don't forget that you can't... Uh, <laughs> Don't forget... That you can listen to us record the podcast live every Tuesday over on our Facebook page, The Cellcast, our uh, Twitch channel, The Cellcast Gaming, and on YouTube at Cellcast. Also, don't forget to join our Patreon if you would like to support us monetarily. At $1, you'll get our everlasting thanks. At at our $5 tier, you can get some artwork from Jacob. And on our $10 tier, you can get bloopers for every for, for every episode we've released that I've remembered to release them for. And you can get commentaries from different movies. So come check us out over there if you would like to support us financially. This podcast is part of the Culture Box Media Network. For more great content like this, please check out the link in the description. There you can find other great shows such as The Untold Podcast which is a speculative fiction podcast utilizing the genres of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror, among others, in order to engage the culture's imagination from a Christian worldview. Every month, Nathan James Norman produces and narrates a new story presented in a unique and dynamic way. You can check out their podcast at untoldpodcast.com. Also, we are a part of Pop Americana, where you can enjoy other shows like Franchise Fatigue. Do you like movies? Of course you do. I bet you even like big movie franchises like Star Wars, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Indiana Jones. And obviously, since you listen to us, you must like listening to movie reviews. But when... But what if I were to tell you there is a podcast that reviews film series one movie at a time? You like that? Well, then go check out the Franchise Fatigue podcast over on your favorite podcast catcher. And listen to James and Gabe give an in-depth analysis and review on every movie in your favorite franchise.
following is a spoiler filled review for Digimon Adventure Try Part 2 Determination. If you have not seen the movie, you should turn us off now. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Anyway. <laughs> I don't think I did that as good as I did last week. No, but it was good. Yes. Bravo. Uh, once again, uh, Digimon Adventure Try was directed by Keitaro Montanoga. And it was written by Yuko Kakihara. And of course, Digimon is created by Akiyoshi Hongo. Now, if you remember last week, I only mentioned the uh, rookie forms of the Digimon because of how many yes. parts in the English version there are because of how many char- pe- different voice actors voice different Digimon. Yes. For reasons. Yes. Known, yeah. They decided to do that back 20 years ago, but mm-hmm. they have to keep doing it now. Anyway, so uh, I did not. If if I mention an actor, a character from last week, it's simply because they're also voicing mm-hmm. the character I included this week. And right. I have gone ahead and included all of the uh, ultimate and the few mega forms we've seen so far. Yes. And what's above mega? Uh, because fusion uh, mega. Well, it's what. I, well, I mean, Wargreymon is mega. Above me- he's mega. He's mega. He's, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting it confused. Um, Om- Omni. In my mind, uh, Metal Greymon was ult- was ultimate. Hey, he is ultimate. He is ultimate. Never mind. Never mind. I just got. I just get my Digimon confused. Yeah, that, that's in, very in easily my, done. In my defense. I came with a Pokemon upbringing. I only had to worry about a maximum of three unless it was a special case. Right. I didn't have to worry about every digi- every po- digi- Pokemon having seven di- uh, versions that they could switch back and forth to at any given moment. But anyway. Anyway. More on that at a future geek uh, discussion that we are working yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. So stay tuned for that. Yes. So anyway, getting into the cast. Kyle Bear is the voice of Greymon. Metal Greymon, War Greymon, and Mr. Keto, Joe's dad. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does show up. Yeah. And in Dragon Ball Z, he's the voice of Gohan as a teenager. Really? Yeah. Okay. Melody Spevik was the voice of Bergeron, Gerudomon, and Mrs. Keto, a.k.a. Joe's mom. Oh, okay. And in the video game Lost Odyssey, she played a character named Maya. Okay. Joshua Seth was the voice of uh, Motimon, I believe, last time. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Ty. Mm-hmm. And in the 2000s Transformers Robots in Disguise, he played Carl. 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 And it was apparently a major character because he was like at least 15 episodes listed under there. Oh, okay. Of just Carl. <laughs> I'm probably... Anyway. Michael Sorich was the voice of Zudomon. Vikemon and Elikmon. Mm-hmm. And in the and in Mob Psycho 100, he is the voice of Dimple. Okay. The leader uh, of the Happy Happy Cult. Okay. That's a that show I've up, never that, seen. That mob ends up breaking up and then they fall in love with his bald head and then Dimple haunts him. It's a good show. It's just weird. <laughs> it makes sense at the time. Okay. Dorothy Elias Fawn is the voice of both Lilymon and Rosemon. Mm-hmm. And in Roroni Kenshin, she was the voice of Kaoru Kamiya. Okay. Dave Mallow was the voice of Anjumon. Or, correction, one of the voices of Anjumon. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Because I actually have two people listed for Anjumon. I really? Don't know why. I haven't looked that far into it yet. But uh, in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers... He was the voice of Babu. That oh yeah, when the, the side, when the, the evil the sidekick, one. The yeah, one with the monocle, yeah, yeah, he was the voice of Babu. <laughs> okay, I thought that was funny. Uh, Jamieson Price was also the voice of Anjumon and Magna Anjumon and Seraphmon, and in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, he was the voice of Reeve Twesty. Okay, one of the. Uh, people working for Shinra that technically is in control of uh, Kate Sith. Okay. Oh, okay. Paul St. Peter was the voice of both Leomon 
an Imperial Dramon. Hmm. And he was Detective Toshimi Komikawa in Paprika. Oh, okay. And then Bo Billingsley was the voice of Ogremon. And in Final Fantasy uh, VII Advent Children, he was the voice of Barrett Wallace. Oh, of course. If you remember last time, we did another thing. We had someone else play Barrett Wallace in the Final Fantasy VII remake. That will play as one of the Digi-Destined. Really? Yeah. Or no, not, not one of the, one of the uh, I think one of the, he played somebody. I don't remember who it was. Oh, okay. But we have two Barretts in this show, in this thing. I, oh, okay. He's probably in the same scenes for all I know. Well, mm. except Ogremon's dead. Hmm. But anyway. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts connections. Ah, there is one. Oh, there's a couple. Okay. There's a lot more than a couple. Okay. Um, Bo Billingsley, starting off with him. Of course, I just said he was Ogremon. Mm-hmm. And he was one of the undead pirates in the Pirates of the Caribbean levels of Kingdom Hearts 2 named Boson. Boson. Okay. Boson. I want to point out that I never knew these these undead pirates in the game had names until we started doing this podcast. Okay. Interesting. Just pointing that out there. Paul St. Peter, who was uh, Leo Mon and Imperial German in this, is Zemnus in Kingdom Hearts. Kirk Thornton, who's Gabumon in Digimon, is Syx and Issa in Kingdom Hearts. Mm. Doug Erholtz, who's Daigo, is uh, Leon, a.k.a. Squall Leonhart, starting in Kingdom Hearts 2. You might uh, Some of these may sound familiar. Mm. Uh, John Eric Bentley, who was the voice of the narrator, and he has additional voices in Kingdom Hearts 3. Charmy Lee was the voice of Biomon and Maki Himikawa in Digimon. Okay. And she voices Makoto Najima in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Okay. I now include that as a Kingdom yes. Hearts game. Mm-hmm. Because I can. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sora. Johnny, uh, both Soras. Both Soras. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch, uh, voice of TK, voices Zero in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Zero being the uh counterpart of Mega Man X. Oh, okay. Let go. Yes. Uh Takahiro Sakurai was Tentamon in the Japanese version, and he's Cloud Strife in Kingdom Hearts. Mm. In the Japanese version, obviously. Uh Hiroki Hirata was the narrator in the Japanese one, and he is Captain Jack Sparrow in the Japanese Kingdom Hearts. And Chika Sakamoto, the voice of Agumon and Greymon in the Japanese Digimon, is Huey, Dewey, and Louie in the Japanese version of Kingdom Hearts. All right. So that's my cast and crew. What do you got in uh, info and stuff? All right. So for for the remainder of the Digimon Adventure Tri um, trifecta films, um, uh, if you want the like full list of information, you need to go back to the first episode of Reunion to get all that. So with all of that out of the way, like studio and distribution, it's done by the same people. Yeah, it's all the same. It's all the same. And we don't like repeating ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Much. So all I'm going to give you is more new information regarding uh, the termination. So, determination. Uh, all right. So I, I did miss. Watching Digimon will give you determination. <laughs> There's an Undertale <laughs> reference. All right. So you can watch uh, there again. You watch this on Peacock. You can watch on uh video video voodoo voodoo thank you voodoo i'm terrible at pronouncing words voodoo voodoo and crackle uh it was released in japan on march si- march 12th 2016 uh mm-hmm. it, it debuted at anime expo on july 1st 2017 through the 4th as well as San Diego Comic-Con on July 19th and the 23rd of 2017, and its general release to the U.S. on August 15th, 2017. Box office, it earned an, uh, 3 million yen, or approximately $235,000 United States, uh, for its first screen in Japan. Uh, support is surpassed the first uh, first day box office results of reunion and earned uh, 45 46 million dollars 46 million yen uh, approximately four hundred seven thousand dollars on its opening weekend on March 30 31st 2016 it earned 144 million yen or a hundred, uh, $1.29 million. So termination 
has a box office group gross of 160 million yen or converted to Amer to us dollar is $1.6 million. And the sequel obviously is Digimon adventure com- uh, confession. That is the next one in the series. Yes. That's when we so were if you get done listening to us, throw that one in. Yeah, exactly. So that is all I have for info and stuff. All right. Getting into the summary of this one. While Joe stays home to study for his exams, the Digi Destined and their Digimon go on a trip to a hot spring in, alongside Nishijima and Himikawa. After the trip, Himikawa and Nishijima direct soldiers to use experimental weapons against an infected Ogremon that manifests in Odaiba, but Leomon takes Ogremon back to the digital world. Folks, I take these summaries straight from Wikipedia, and I su- suspect they're all based on the Japanese version. I'm just going to say that right now, because I don't think they ever said any of these names for locations. Just saying. Uh, as Mimi and Mako prepare for a cheer girl cafe for the upcoming school festival, Ogremon appears again. When Toga- Togemon inadvertently damages a helicopter, Izzy reprimands Mimi for being selfish. After Ogremon is sent back to the digital world, Leomon visits the real world, informing the Digidestined that Ogremon is infected. As Mimi laments her selfishness, she hears from Joe that he is avoiding battles with the Digi- Digimon to try to cope with adulthood, but loathes his own ineptness. As Gomamon decides to run away from home, Izzy receives an ominous message in Digicode. On the day of the school festival, Mako shows Mimi her support by wearing her chill girl outfit for the cafe, while the Digimon sneak into the festival to try and win a costume contest for free food. Afterwards, Gomamon tells Joe that he ran away because he refused to fight together anymore, causing Joe to angrily storm off. Meikumon is abducted by what appears to be the Digimon Emperor, Palmon, Gomamon, and a now infected Leomon, really partially infected Leomon, follow them into the digital distortion as they combat an infected Imperial Dramon. Kari urges Joe to fight by his partner's side. After overcoming his insecurities, Joe manages to digivolve Gomamon into Vikemon alongside Mimi, who digivolves Palmon, into Rosemon. After they defeat Imperial Dramon, a traumatized Meikumon changes form, destroys Leomon, let's put it right down here, kills Leomon, Pretty much, and escapes into another distortion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I love Maine Coons. <laughs> Don't make me hate the Maine Coon. <laughs> Anyway, that brings us to, uh, I would, we would have trivia. However, the only trivia I could really find for this spoils upcoming information. Yes, so I will be leaving that trivia off of this. Yes. Bringing us to our likes. Jacob, your first like. My first like goes to the very end of the film, the conclusion. <laughs> so you have this, this battle with a obviously infected Imperial German against a bunch of rookies champions ultimates and eventually a mega now two grand, megas two megas we get two megas two new megas two new megas you hadn't seen before yeah well you hadn't seen on a screen before you hadn't seen okay, screen yes before. they you probably didn't... came up in digimon cyber sleuth yeah and card game or whatever whatever, other whatever. <laughs> digimon whatever it is connected universe stuff yes so be like granted imperial Dramon is a DNA Digivolve Mega. So he's two Digimon in one. So then, in the middle of the fight, he transformed into his fighter mode, which makes him a better... It's like, oh, crap, here we go. So you get all of that amazing stuff, that amazing scene. As like, okay, great animation there. And then everybody comes to the, back to the real world. And you're still reeling. He's like, who in the world is that Digimon Emperor? Because he kind of looks like Ken, but then we saw what we saw reunion. It's like, then who the heck is he? Well, I digress. Well, I mean, he looks like Ken, except he, he looks about ten times older. Yeah, he does. It's it's not like when you look at the difference between uh, Ty in uh, Digimon season one and Digi and Digimon Try, right? Where he's you know obviously five years older. This looks like. Maybe if you jumped into Digimon Adventure Quad and he's on college. Yeah, something like that. I'm assuming there might Some... be a quad one day. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows with this series? So either way, either way, you, you get through that. You get this amazing scene. And then you get what I recalled earlier from Digimon Tamers. That's it, season 
three. That's season three. Which is the card game. Yeah, yeah based off the card game. Yes. And there's yeah. Sure. What what I'm referring to is he death. Not everyone knows what all this stuff is. I'm just being. I know. I know. I'm just trying to explain it. Okay. So what I'm referring to is the death of Leomon <laughs> in this one, and then you get the actual. You get this sudden. Oh my gosh! Leomon gets stabbed by Mekumon. Am I saying that right? Mekumon. Yeah, Mekumon. Yeah, Mekumon, who's somehow. Digivolved. <laughs> it's no, she did not digivolve. Everything I read, that was not a digivolve. She just shifted forms. Oh, okay. And the the scene that got me was because the vic- they didn't even do a dark digivolution either. Yeah, which technically would have been what would have qualified. Anyway. Yeah, that's true. So the thing that got me with that scene is like, oh crap, they're recalling something from Digimon Digimon tamers with that it's like oh crap that's that was really good the fact to be like leo mon said what he said is like it's gonna be okay because he said the exact same thing in tamers so the fact Whereas, be like i don't remember the scene and i just went back straight back to wizard mon yeah with that was God, good with god Oman, i'm yeah. thinking the cats and their protectors and how they deal with them dying yeah exactly symmetry yeah exactly by calvin klein anyway yeah like <laughs> Calvin Klein. This isn't Back to the Future, man. <laughs> yes, Steedlet, I know that was a stupid joke. Let's move on. <laughs> but either way, the fact that uh, Meku, make it be like you see her Digivice go red, then black. <laughs> yeah, it was black, and there was, and the screen was red, and, and there was crossed DNA. Yeah, crossed DNA. I was like, oh what crap! Because to me, the the only there again going back to Digimon season two. When we see when when uh, Ken first gets his Digivice, it goes black when he's in the dark ocean. Just hold that there. That's all I'm saying. That is, I don't know what that means. If you haven't seen it, go watch it on Netflix. I don't have time to watch our Netflix. Like I don't Hulu, have time I to watch 120 episodes of Digimon. <laughs> So that I I, I that, so I'm also that, making a wild guess how many episodes there are between Digimon Adventure not, not, and Digimon Adventure Two. Not that much, but either either way, either way. So I, I was like, "Whoa, okay, that's the only way a Digivice can go black." I was like, "Oh crap!" And and then like the the cream of resistance be like everybody shocked face except for the one agent who goes shocked then grins. I'm like, "Oh crap, what's going on?" Okay. Like, she knows something. What's going on? <laughs> I'm just going to say that's what the trivia was about. Was her. Ah. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. I have a feeling I'm not going to like her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Anyways. So, yeah, we get this We get this amazing scene where everybody's, like, shocked, you know. It's like, what in the world just happened? And then... You know, sadly, Leo Mon dies, and he doesn't come back, <laughs> as far as I understand. Because well, what? Maybe somebody else will digivolve into a Leo Mon. That is true. I assume he has previous digivolutions. Yeah, but he didn't just hatch from the egg like that. Yeah, but either way, it's like just that. That scene just blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh. Because one, I was like, okay, something's up. Because one, we saw Mekumon in Reunion go the whole red thing. And it's like, okay, has something to do with what, what's going on. And it's like, okay, and then you see Mekumon, her eyes go red, and it's like, oh, crap. This is not good. I'm like, okay, Meku, what did you do? Where did you go? <laughs> or where did you accidentally find yourself in? That's my question. <laughs> So either way, there again, me being the Digimon fan, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. So I, I have this prevailing theory, what's going on. I'm not going to go into it because it didn't really apply yet until we get to later on. So I'm just more like, oh my gosh, this got good. So either way, so that is my number one. It's the conclusion went, bah! So good. It's nice to see you geek out after a while. Thank you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what is your number one? My first like is that this is a classic Digimon story. Agreed. I mentioned this during the other, the, uh, the pre-show, mm-hmm. the pre-show, the, uh, the spoiler free. 
But, I mean, you get so much of this goofy comedy that uh, is just classic the way Digimon writes stuff. It's mm-hmm. obviously uh, goofy. It's not the kind of thing most people would write. Right. Yeah, it's still funny as all get out. Oh, yeah. And then you get, like, because that's the thing. You, you bring up the issue with Mei Kumon. Yeah. Up until the last, that, that scene. Yeah. She's the funniest character in the entire film. Yeah. I mean... Especially when they're all begging Leomon to take him up. Oh my gosh! And he looks yes. down, and she's got the full <laughs> big cat, cat eyes. eyes. Goes, Pretty please. <laughs> <And> <laughs> boom! <laughs> Heart thumps uh, out of his. This is not good. <laughs> that that's weaponizable. That's weaponized adorableness. <laughs> that is make Kumon's attack. Yes. Weaponized adorableness. <laughs> And the name of the attack, Pretty Please. <laughs> That's enough to make my Otis Mon crap his pants. <laughs> his digi pants. <laughs> but then you get all that stuff there before that when they're all in, we're all eating snacks mm-hmm. in Izzy's office. Yes. And you know, they're just like, you know, it's so hungry, I can eat the couch cushions. And you yes. think they're going to drop it there. <laughs> no. Here, you know, you can eat, you should eat a you should eat a donut. Or how about a couch cushion? <laughs> I'll give my donuts ever do to you. you. <laughs> that is going to be the name of this episode, guys. I'm telling you right now. You probably already know this. I don't care. I'm naming the episode that. Um And then as they're going to the festival, so this you know, maybe those the heat of those couch cushions wouldn't be such a good idea. It's like, did you eat Izzy's couch? It is Agumon. Agumon, Agumon what did you do? do? That's all he thinks about is food. I know. Eh? Agu- He's a hungry Digimon. You know, Ag- Agu, the first part of his name means bite in Japan. Yeah. Japanese. Yeah. So literally his name, if you were, if they were to do a literal translation to English, would be bite mon. <laughs> Just well, saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Just saying. <laughs> or bite monster. I don't know which. Um, that sounds worse. Moving on. Uh, but I mean, even the stuff there in the spa. Which, oh yeah. Admittedly, there was a point in watching all that. I was like, "Guys, what does this have to do with anything? Thing. This does not move the story along." But then Palmon and Maykumon get, get lost, getting lost, <laughs> and having to pretend to be stuffed the animals. animals, and then children in costumes. <laughs> oh where, my gosh! Who wears a costume to a to a spa? That makes no sense. And that's so cute. It's like, oh. That's where they are. <laughs> yes. And then Mimi jumps into the boys' bathroom and says, Like me, you would. Everyone look at me! I'm here to sing! It's like... Uh, of course. Uh, I don't think they're going to listen to you sing. Eric. No, Mimi, I think they're distracted. I think you're well aware what they're doing. Uh, anyway, I mean, I just... It, it's just such a fun episode. Uh, the, the comedy bits, while there are some of them can be... Really stupid and can can get annoying, right? From time to time, uh, it's just I, I enjoy the fact that here and this is about how they would have they they would have localized an episode, yeah, of Digimon, especially once they made it to you know the real world mm-hmm. episodes. So uh, yeah, I appreciated it and I thought it was fun. I like that it's a classic style of Digimon. Story. I would agree with you, completely agree with you. What's your second like? My second like kind of ties in what you said earlier, the the fact that Le- Leomon is convinced by the the younger the the rookie and champion Digimon to go to the festival because they want food. <laughs> yeah. And because they ran out of snacks at Izzy's place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, they never talk about how any of these kids have money. Yeah, it's true. How, how do you see all is, oh, these very, very hungry Digimon? Yeah, exactly. Well, they they need energy to digivolve, so that takes a lot of food. <laughs> I get that. But even even Joe's parents don't even really care that Gabumon is there. Yeah. So it's like, other than, be quiet, let him study. It's like, <laughs> shut up, lady. <laughs> let the kid be a kid. He's still in high school. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. So it was more that, that entire scene of where all the Digimon are trying to get Leomon to take them to the fair. And then you get that scene where... Drew po- perfectly, <laughs> exactly, 
roar! <laughs> the heart comes out of his chest. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Would even <laughs> get Debbie Munn to grab his pants. <laughs> or whoever. Or whoever. Oh my gosh. That was just absolutely hysterical. I was laughing my butt off with that scene. I thought it was absolutely just genius. And of course, they want to eat. They go into the festival. They find, oh, free food if we go into this festival. Yes. And of course, who wins? Makomon. <laughs> yes, Makomon, because she is the cutest. That is true. And I found that Mimi was uh, berating um, her, uh, her Digimon. I can't. Palmon. Palmon. Yeah, Palmon. That how you didn't win. It's so, okay. Uh, a uh, plant plum. versus the. A Mekumon. Especially since the plant was the tail end of that costume while Gabumon was on top. That is true. That was a very weird... Just sitting there. Yeah, just sitting there. Like, are you a hat? What are you? (laughs) What are you supposed to be, Gabumon? (laughs) Other than obvious way to let Joe know where you are, because someone's going to call. Yeah. Who are you going to call? Joe Keto! (laughs) Uh, so yeah, that was, that was my, be like, there are so many great scenes in this and very well played out, very well, uh, constructed scenes that give you like a clear direction what's going on. And so, yeah, that's my number two is that entire scene, the festival, the Digimon going mm-hmm. to it and the Leo Mon trying to wrangle all of these younger Digimon. It doesn't work. <laughs> Pretty please. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Yes, this is my number two. So what is your uh, second like? I like the, the part of the story that deals with Joe and Mimi's issues. Mm. Oh, Joe yeah. not really wanting to be a... Uh, he he he's wants, he, he thought everything was done and was ready to move on with his mm-hmm. life. And he had all has all these plans apparently set up. And I get the feeling it goes a little deeper than just having to deal with the fact that the DigiDest and stuff is coming in again because... If I remember correctly, in the last one, he was not doing so good on those prep tests. No, he wasn't. So I'm sure he's dealing with the uh, that stress more. It's really more dealing with that stress than the fact that he's got to be a digi-destined. And the digi-destined is just horning in on his stuff. But he even says that he's a coward. Yeah. He recognizes he's I trying love to that. run away from it. Because he's wanting to be... He feels like the Digimon stuff must was a kid thing. He thought he grew past that. And now he's still having to deal with it as an adult, and he doesn't want to deal with it as an adult because he's got... It's essentially Christopher Robin in Christopher Robin. Mm-hmm. If you've seen that movie, having to deal with Winnie the Pooh showing back up. Mm. Uh, it's, it's that similar kind of a story, but I like how they intersect that with someone finally calling Mimi out for her crap. Yeah, pretty much. Finally. Finally, thank you. And actually saying, Mimi, you're a narcissist. What does that mean? mean. It means you're stuck on yourself oh. and annoying. Thank you! Yeah. I've been saying that <laughs> since I first saw this show. <laughs> Mimi is the most annoying character. She always has been. Yeah. To me. And she was it, definitely that in the first movie. And this movie, starting to focus on her at the beginning, I was going, oh, this is going to be a slog. <laughs> dealing with a character I don't like. But they actually did such a good job having, uh-huh. having her Indeed. actually finally grow out of being you know how mimi was yeah into being you know growing as a character and i like how her uh cost her her, her uh her outfit at the beginning was a call back to her old digimon outfit yeah with the cowboy hat and such mm-hmm. i still never understood why she was wearing that other than she was a kid and they were at summer camp and she was a, sp- a spoilt little kid <laughs> Yeah. We got to wear anything she wanted. Pretty much. And that's what she wore to the Digi World. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Also liked the that someone was wearing a summer camp t-shirt. Obviously Hi. referencing the summer camp they were at when they be, found out they were Digi Destined. And apparently that's the only shirt TK wears. Apparently. Like, that's all he had throughout the whole movie. He had, he had at least had a white and yellow two-tone shirt last yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. That said, summer what, camp. What strange shirt will TK be wearing next time? Yeah, exactly. Maybe it'll be blue with pink polka dots. Who knows? <laughs> uh. But, I mean, anyway, it's just... I like how they actually dealt with the... Because that's the thing. Digimon does, is not something I expect... No offense. I don't expect this to be something serious. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stupid and fun in this. Don't get me wrong. There's right. a lot of stuff that kids could watch along and enjoy this too. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of moments where it's like, yeah, we're dealing with this. We're dealing with, we're going to have a scene in which one per, in which one person feels like they're being a coward. Another person feels like they're, they're a narcissist. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have them fight it out. And neither one are going to be happy when they leave because they're still not going to have their problems worked out. Yeah. Also, we're going to have Gabumon run away from Joe and Joe being mm. too much of, uh, and Joe not, not going out and looking for him. I mean, mm. one, he, he does at least text around, but he's still there studying the whole time. Yeah. He doesn't go and actually go look for Gabumon, but he has to come to realize he may be growing up, but he is still a Digidestin and he is still a partner with Gabumon. And they still have to fight together. Which is what this leads to at the end of yeah. it. So yeah, I like Joe and Mimi's mm-hmm. stories in this. I would completely agree with you. Alright, so my third and final like of uh, this film was exactly yours. Was the fact that like, you had Joe and Mimi. This was very much their story. Mm-hmm. And I love the the fact that like, Mimi does get called out on her 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 drama of being a narcissist and uh the fact to be like a spoiled brat. and being a brat and her idea of be like just oh just rush in there do whatever mm-hmm. don't consult people be like it's all about her and uh Joe about being like being honest about himself actually no. having collateral damage being shown on screen because exactly. she jumped in too early. Yeah, exactly. So you have Joe, which be like was always. I, I love the fact, that, like in this movie, in these movies, they actually focus on all the characters. Because if this was anything traditional, uh, you would have it would only focus on maybe like three characters. Everybody else would yeah. be kind of a background character, but every character gets a spotlight, and they're they're all done very well. With Joe being this character who is he's trying to be his own person, he's trying to be an old man. And he's he's pushing himself because he wants to be this. Um, I, I read I read one review where it was it was saying that, um, like oh they're they're being pushed by society to be you know they're the form their own into their the the gender that they're supposed to be which is not because if you had no any knowledge about Digimon, Mimi has always been Mimi, <laughs> Joe has always been Joe. Uh, granted the American translations a little more, Hey, let's pick on Joe because he's this, you know, weird, awkward, you know, uh, sick kid all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so I I love that they, they go into so much depth of Joe just saying, be like, Hey, at least you're not a coward. And he goes, and admits I'm a coward. I'm scared. I'm scared. Be like, I I, I don't want to be a digi destiny anymore. I want to live my own life, but he doesn't know how to. He's he's so afraid to you know do something he loves, but he's so but like even his own father says be like yeah I want him, I want him to succeed, but he's pushing himself too hard with this. Like it's not even ex, it's not even an external. It's him, and I love that they bring in this complexity of a character, and it's just so amazing. The fact to be like you have Joe and Mimi who are both in a sense nurses uh, about what they do, and. Um, Joe with worrying and, you know, being per- a perfectionist in a lot of ways that me, me being a hard headed, just being, I'm going to go in there, do whatever it is. I'm going to do it the way I want it. Doesn't matter what's going to happen. And I'm just going to be me. Mm-hmm. So the fact to be like, they, this movie is all about these, the first two, at least I've watched the third one. Not going to get into that. The, the idea that it's the characters having to overcome something in their life and kind of come to acceptance in a way. And partially they do. There again, what I love about Digimon is you have characters with problems. They have characters with conflicts that you you learn something about the characters. And I really enjoy that about Digimon. And yeah, it's just amazing how they write this movie and how they write, they wrote Digimon for many years. Um, And plus I like Gobamon. Gobamon's cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, that is my third like. Much like your first like, my third like is the Digi fight at the end. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. I mean, first off, you start off with uh, Mimi going ahead and digivolving uh, Palmon mm-hmm. into Togemon, like almost right off the bat mm-hmm. to go fight them in the Digi world. 
or whatever that sub pocket dimension thing yeah. is in the distortion anyway. Yeah. And Goma is it Gomamon? Mm-hmm. Gabuya Gabumon. Gobamon. Gomamon, yeah. I'm getting my my G Mons confused. Mm-hmm. But Gomamon goes in and fights despite the fact he is in rookie form and can't digivolve because Joe's not there. Yeah. He he has this tendency of like he's kind of like maybe he kind of just jumps in and tries to help as much as he can because that's Gobamon. Right. He wants he wants to help and he's in there to fight, but he can't do anything in that yeah. form. He literally rookie form this rookie form can't do any fighting as far as I know. I mean Unless he's in the ocean, he's got fish around him. True. Now Agumon, it's not like Agumon who can still do his pepper breath. Yeah. Or any of the other ones. Gomamon does not have much. He but he, he at least he's getting in there and trying. Yeah. And then uh, Mimi either finally gets over herself or whatever that causes her to finally allow her to digivolve. Again, we get our first actual ultimate evol- digivolution in this. Yes. We actually get to see the full digivolution mm-hmm. sequence. And you do get to see the little symbols mm-hmm. for the... Uh, the crest. From the crest. Yeah, the mm-hmm. crest. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. that yeah, was I love really that good. They, they, how they included that in there. Actually, they have a separate uh, digivolution for each one because they could easily for a mo- for movies like this, they could have easily just had oh, like do semi warp digivolutions, not mm-hmm. actual warp digivolutions, yeah. but have this where they quickly go from this and now they're in now she's go from Palmon straight to Lilymon. Yeah, they could easily have done that. I'm Really thankful they didn't do that. We actually get to see the Togemon Digivolution for the second time in this movie. Right. Because they play both both times. It's the full sequence. Mm-hmm. And then we get to see uh, her go to, to Lilymon later on. I don't think it's immediate because mm-hmm. I think Gomamon gets to Digivolve first. Once Joe finally real once, uh, Is it Sora that goes and grabs him finally from his from after he's, while he's fixing his bike? Oh, no, it's uh, oh, Kari. It's Kari. Kari. Kari goes and gets him and says, look, you people, you, you and Gomamon are partners for life. Mm-hmm. You got to go and save him because he's about to get himself killed. And she was. Mm-hmm. And Joe finally, finally mans up and mm-hmm. goes and helps his, his, his friend. Yes. And that allows Gomamon to first transform into, um, oh, what's his name? What's the first one? Um, uh, hold on. Let's see, he digivolves into... Hold on. I'm sorry, I don't have all these memorized. No, 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 like, no worries. Uh, oh, crap. Because I'm getting... Uh, hold on, time. <laughs> and I know it's eventually uh, Zudomon and Vikemon. Yeah. He's an Ikakumon? No. That's someone else. Yeah. That's Sintomon. No, it's Kabu, uh, Kabuterimon, Mega Kabuterimon, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I thought it was, I, I, it was just, it just came to me as a thing. Yeah, Ikakumon. Yeah, Ikakumon. Okay, close that. So, I mean, first he falls into Ikakumon, I'm thinking, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And th- it didn't occur to me that that's as far as we ever got to see him go. The only ones we got to see go in the original show go to ultimate was uh not ultimate uh to mega yeah was uh agumon and, and go and a uh, gabumon gabumon sorry mm-hmm. i didn't i did not realize it so we get we go to a uh, zudomon i'm thinking okay yeah we got ultimate form that's cool yeah t- technically in the first series we do get to see uh we do see the ultimate versions of all the other digimon Right, the ultimate, but we don't get to see the Mega. We don't see Mega Forms. Yeah. We finally get Mega yeah. in this. And you get Vikemon, which mm-hmm. I still want to call him Vikemon. Yeah. Because that's really how I see it. Of course, I still want to call uh, the other one Rosemon. Yeah, Rosemon. Rosemon. And they get, mm-hmm. Just go with the French, please. Just go with the French. <laughs> Rosemon. Rosemon sounds cooler. Yeah. But anyway. But we get to see those two new forms. And I'm yeah. like, okay. We are actually going to get to see some cool new stuff because we didn't get to see any cool new stuff outside of uh, the introduction of Meikumon last time. Yeah. This time we're actually getting some cool new stuff. Agreed. With uh, all these characters. It's like, okay, that means we'll probably get to see uh, some of the other ones going forward. 
I doubt we'll see armor digivolutions for Angemon, for uh, Patamon and Gatamon, uh, but right. I mean, they had those. They could, yeah, they could show those, but they're not, obviously they're not going to, right? Because they're going to focus on the normal track of digivolution. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's like okay, we're going. That's cool. We're going to get to see that because there's still a little part of me that loves that. It. It's like okay, we're getting new stuff. Cool. And it, and, it, and it's nice that they use that as here's a reward for actually going, uh, actually having character growth. Yeah. You're going to get a new form. So it actually is like, okay, cool. Because in so many other things, because bear in mind, I came from Power Rangers where, yeah, there might be some quote unquote character growth. I'm sure people can't see the uh, quotation marks I'm making with my hands on the audio form of the show, mm. but I am doing that. We get to see some character growth, but it's just, oh, we learned a lesson and now we can use this other new Zord. It's going it's to attach itself to the thing now. Right. Cool. <laughs> Next week, it's the same problems. Digimon doesn't do that, thankfully. No. I, they, they actually do have growth, and I'm thankful for that, and I'm glad, and I'm looking forward to seeing where this is going. So, yeah, that's my third like. All right. That, which brings us to our dislikes. What is your first dislike, Jacob? Now, my first is like, there again, it's a nitpick, because there again, you're working with a budget, uh, I would say the vehicles in this are just like, you go from reunion, you go to the termination, the vehicles are the same. It's you, you have the water the, is the same. The too. water is the same. The, the camera angles do you, about, do you see what I mean by the water last time? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. Me. It does. Um, the, the fact that like when they're driving, obviously, cause the, the, the 3d model of the car moves, but the background kind of moves with it. That isn't the way physics works and just how, how they drive and everything. It's just like kind of weird nod. It's like, really? Like you spent all the money you have or the bulk of your budget doing very well with your, your fight scenes, your animations, your, uh, your digivolutions, all and these great things. You can't get a simple parallax scroll correctly. Yeah, Exactly. So that's another nitpick. The the uh, the car problem. Let's say that. Well, I mean the fact that when they get to uh, you know where he's trying to fix his bike after it messed up, and you realize mm-hmm. every single bike in that shot is this, is three is a three D bike. Yeah. And there's no reason for any of them to be three D other than they were cutting corners. Yeah. Because that was cheaper than drawing them. Because you could just copy paste that. I'm going, uh, guys, guys, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Unless all, right. all the Digidestined are about to get on those bikes to run to go save Godomon, which would make no sense either. Mm-hmm. Godomon, Makumon, whatever. Catmon. <laughs> Catmon. Yeah. My That's Godomon. <laughs> I know. I'm aware that's Godomon, but it's also Makumon. But anyway. Yeah. Technically Leomon also. Moving on. <laughs> all the cats. <laughs> My first dislike is that is how slow this movie starts out. It is. There was a point in here I, I was wondering, it's like, are the Digimon going to do anything in this other than just be annoying? <laughs> I mean, last movie, we got two big fight scenes. And now it's like, we're going to a spa. Uh. <laughs> Guys, this is just like one inch, one bit of distinction different from the beach episode of anime. Pretty much. This was the beach episode of anime thing. It's, just, it's in a really really expensive spa that you still have to spend money at after you get into anyway they spent a lot of money on that yeah. section and i'm sitting there going guys what does this have to, what, how does this move the story forward because it really didn't and it goes it's it's ha- the first half hour of the movie yeah i was like what does this have to do with distortions and make it's just you people meeting Ma- Mako and Makumon. That's all this is. And don't get me wrong. You need stuff like that. Yeah. Those are five, ten minute scenes. That is, you do stuff and stuff interrupts and you have to actually, and Makumon actually has to show her stuff with the rest of the team. Mm-hmm. The first time, bear in mind, the first time we actually get to see Makumon do anything is at the end of this movie when she tries to attack Ogremon. Yeah. That was cool, though. At an hour and 15 minutes into the second film, Makumon actually shows what she's capable of. 
Yeah. Granted, she does a good job for what she's doing. Throwing paws. <laughs> yes. And then she gets kidnapped by the Digimon Emperor. Her. Air quote. Air quotes. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. Ish. Give you how bad I, my memory was. I actually looked up who Imperial Dramon digivolved from. Mm-hmm. Because I was wondering if he digivolved from Wormmon. Because, you know, Worm, mm-hmm. Worm. I was trying... Mm-hmm. Digimon doesn't always follow no. logic in the Digivolutions, but there is a logic, and I could have seen Worm to W-O-R-M to W-Y-R-M being the thought process. <laughs> worm to Worm. Yeah. To me, more like a cyber dragon, and I because it's been a long time since I've seen right. I, I'm surprised I remembered uh, that Digimon was Wormmon, to be honest. Because yeah. I, I don't, I, and I, I had to look up who he digivolved into. It's like, oh, yeah. he goes to Stingmon, he never goes to all any of the others. So, okay, so I had to look that up because I was mm-hmm. curious. Because I was like, oh, that would be an interesting thing where if he actually caused, he's actually. I didn't know if it was Ken or not. I just like I just you know you you see that costume. You go, it's the Digimon Emperor. What is the crap he doing? He's on the good guy team now. Can't remember his real name mm-hmm. other than Ken. Ken what? Ken Dudu? <clears throat> I don't know. It's Japanese, so Ken Ishikawa. I don't know. I'm making up stuff now, but uh, it just takes so long to get to stuff, and by the time it does, it's like. We're finally moving the story forward, and we move it, like, just barely forward. Mm. It's and Until, you know, the last second of the movie, it's like, wait, what? Mekumon is evil now? Well, probably not evil, because she didn't dark digivolve, because she didn't digivolve. Yeah. She just shit form changed. I mean, champion level can do that. Mm-hmm. Uh... So she form changed into an attack mode or vicious mode, I think is what I saw it was called. So what? I mean, is she attacking to defend herself? And now she's afraid she's going to hurt Mako. And so she's running away to protect Mako. That would be a classic Digimon thing to do. I could see that. I don't know. I don't think that's it. But, I mean, it takes so long to get to that point, we only get to move the story ahead 30 feet instead of the mile of the movie should have been able to take it. Right. Because we spent so much time in the spa <laughs> and make and making getting ready for the festival to turn our class turn into a, a, a dating uh, a, a dating uh, rep cafe for the for the school festival. Right. Based off of a really child friendly version of Hooters. Tell me yep. I'm wrong. No, that's you're what daters has to be. Yeah. Referencing. Daters. It, Hooters. It's not Dave and Busters. No. Which is my first thought when they said daters. I realized no it daters, not Dave and Busters. Uh oh, I know what this is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So yeah. I don't like how slow this starts because it causes it to have to rush the ending a touch and we still don't move the story forward enough to feel like the story moved. Hmm. We've only got six movies to go through and we need to move this story from where it started to at its ending. It's got to go through like a whole season of Digimon. Yeah. And it feels like by this point we should be each one of these. It should be a six act thing. And it feels like we're in act 1.5 at the end of movie two. Yeah. Because we still don't know what's going on. I, anyway. I, I would agree with you there. Be like, the, it is very, the the story, the pro, the progression of the story does slow down a little bit here, but you do get a lot of very good character development yes, throughout yeah. that. And I like the character most. It gives us a good, good stuff to do with, with Joe and Mimi, like I mm. said, and some of the other characters. Yeah. But there's, but that first half hour, it's like, that should have been a montage. And you should have put something else there to fill up that time that would have helped move the story along, maybe in a better way. Yeah. It's not that it's not moving the story along. It's just not being done in a better way, I guess. is really the best way. I get you. It could have been better. It could have flowed better. Instead, we get 30 minutes in a spa, and I'm sitting there going, oh, this just took a nosedive. (laughs) 
this doesn't pick up. Thankfully, half hour in. Okay, we're moving on. We're getting this interesting story with you know Joe and Mimi. Okay, I can go with that. This is going somewhere. Okay, and yeah, I'm really liking the rookie. I'm really liking the rookie forms wanting to eat stuff. That's funny. Yeah, and then pooty please. Okay, yeah, I'm invested with the rest of the movie. <laughs> pooty pooty please, please. please. Hook you, line singer. <laughs> I, I like May Kumon at this point. I'm really curious how they're going to work this thing because wh- whether she's, and obviously she's at the center of the whole debacle, mm-hmm. whatever it is. So yes. Anyway, what's your second dislike? My second dislike. Uh, by the way, I do like your your point. It does the story does slow down a little bit, mm-hmm. but uh, my second dislike is how the animation slightly drops in quality a little bit. Yeah. But like the animation does drop in quality a little bit. Now, granted, the digivolutions and the fights are still that high, you know, high end, high quality. Right. But mm. it's the day to day stuff. It's the day to day stuff. It's a little slow. It's, a, right. it's, you know, it's, it's dropped a little bit from reunion. And, uh, there, there are a few scenes here and there. There are a few scenes here and there where they're reusing scenes, like the, the bike rack scene. Mm hmm. There, there's once there, this, that scene is used, I think three times, I believe three, four times. And there's one scene where you see a girl, she's unlocking her car. She's not moving. There's several scenes where this character is not moving at all, yeah. but that scene in particular, we see the same girl twice. There's yeah. no change. There's no color change. There's no outfit change. It's the same character. So there again, there's the animation drop and the, the overuse of, um, uh, static scenes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my second dislike. My second dislike is that the rookie form Digimon after a while start going, start getting a bit annoying. Okay. I started noticing it in the spa scene. Now this is one of the things that fluctuated because sometimes I thought the scene played brilliantly with them yeah. being them, but after a while I was going, guys. Y'all should not be in a group because I don't think anyone can. Izzy should not be able to take care of all of you right now. Yeah. As crazy as y'all are being with this party, y'all should be in the, uh, on the server right now. If you're going to act this crazy, you are destroying his office all for a jelly donut. Pretty much. And I'm, 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 Every, every, their antics just after a while was, it was just well I enjoyed stuff don't get me yeah. wrong but after a while their entire the, almost all the rookie form Digimon story for the most part throughout mm. this and really the story wasn't focusing on the Digimon for this one it was, yeah. except for uh, Gabumon and not even really Palmon it was really Gabumon not Gabumon um, cause Gabumon is Matt's mm-hmm. Gomamon yeah Gomamon uh, really, because that Gomamon's the only really Digimon that's focusing on the story. Mm-hmm. But even then, he ends up with the rest of the group, and every once in a while, yeah, the, his story will interject into the fun they're all having. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I don't want to talk to Joe right now. Tell him to go Stop. cry on a rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what he said, and that's not what I wanted to say, but this right. is a family show. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it just got annoying. Some of the, some of the Digimon, the, it, that whole section was like, yeah, there's some cute stuff in here. There's some funny stuff in here. Quit being pains in the butt to your trainers. That's not the right trainer. Term for, that's not this the right not term Pokemon. for Digimon. I don't know what. I was thinking Digimon. Partner. 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 Quit being pains to your partner. Quit being a pain in your partner's bohonkus. <laughs> yes, it is Good bohonkus. One. Okay. Um, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. I had to use something. Uh, <laughs> It's just I. Part of me wants everything to move to to connect, and I really do like how they finally get everyone there with. Pretty please. <laughs> really, that ought to be the name of this episode. Is yes. pretty please? But I'm still going with what did a jelly donut ever do to you? Uh, <laughs> so it's, it was it was just one of those moments where it's like. I don't think I could stand y'all guys right now. I'm with Joe right now on this one, guys. <laughs> y'all are being annoying. <laughs> y'all need to be hanging out with your partners, at least on their phones or something. Not uh, 
crashing at Izzy's office eating his couch cushions. <laughs> so yeah, they just got annoying uh, after Yeah, I, I, like, I, I, I totally under- get it. I totally like get if, it. If, if the point of the scene is for us to understand Joe's point of view, even though this isn't Joe's the reason Joe's kind of fighting against this, I understand it now! Yeah. This is like wrangling t- a, a kindergartners. A horde of kindergartners. Been there, done that. <laughs> Anyway, that's my second. Okay, I, I totally get that point because I've done it before. That's I know. That's, it's, it, it's hard, believe me. <laughs> I, I keep a part of me wants them to still be as serious in, in their rookie forms as they are in their champion forms. Yeah. Except for obviously God Oman and Meiku Munson are already in their champion forms, but they're acting like rookie forms. Okay. Well, it's cats. What do you expect? Yes, they're obviously more evolved naturally. Oh, okay. And, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. T Rex counterpart. Wow, okay. Hey, there ain't a dog on the, in the show. True. So I can get away with this. Okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> dog I have, hater. I have yet to see Wolfmon. Chihuahua Mon. <laughs> There's one. He's just a very odd character. <laughs> just saying. It's Cordomon. a very. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, Korgamon. Either Korgamon. That's what you're going to be dra- drawing up the next day is Korgamon. <laughs> Although I think there is like a... Well, that is the thing. Technically, Gabumon does turn into Garumon, who is obviously a wolf. Yeah. So there is a, a dog on there him. Is there is a dog-ish. Anyway, yes. <laughs> there is Garumon. I'll yep. give you that. All right. So my third is like... Third and final is like... Uh, how do I describe this? There again, I'm going to geek out on this one. So just yeah, hang on to something. So in season one, in season one, be like you get the crest. Wizard can... Mon dies. Yes, was dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> Wizard Mon dies. So you get into the um, uh, like the the Digimon. They have to face uh Puppet Mon and Myotis Mon. And all these, well, they were facing my Osman, but like and the, that the, weird the, Elvis thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever that was. Yes. I can't remember his name, but they, they have to face like the, the four masters or something like that. Yes. And they have to figure out who these guys are. And they have to use the crests in order to defeat them. So at the end of season one, they have to literally sacrifice their ability to access or use the, the use the crest in order to defeat, um, uh, Apocalymon, who's the main villain from the end of season one. And I'm like, okay, they can't use our crest anymore. So they, I think in season two, Jinai kind of gives them a boost where they can digivolve, you know, past their champion form. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking like, okay, that's really cool. But then you get to try. They don't explain it. There, there's no, how, how in the world can they digivolve past the champion? Be like, yeah, they they've in the past had the ability to trans to digivolve past champion into ultimate and into mega, but how do you do that without a crest? I have a theory. Okay, isn't the point of the crests? Mm-hmm. In some ways, they have to show qualities of that crest. Yes, agreed. Now they're all growing up. Now remind me, what was Joe's crest? Joe's is faithfulness. Or loyalty, maybe? Yeah, loyalty. So he had to be loyal to Gabumon in order for Gabumon to... Digivolve. Digivolve. Yeah. So he had to show his... Uh, what his crest was. Mm. What was Mimi's? Uh, give me one second. I can't remember. I mean, I, what I'm getting at is they have both... Since they both had to grow as a character. Right. And they don't have the... They were able to actually use that without having to use the crest as an amplifier. Is my right. thought process. So yeah, they don't have the little tablet and the pendant thing to wear around right. the neck to do it, but they are still showing that ability because they... Yeah. Sincerity, that's sincerity. what it was. She had to be sincere. Yeah. About... I would agree with you so, there. Yeah. I would completely agree with you on that. It's just more... They they don't really explain it. It's like, okay, that makes sense why they would evolve because their character... Their, their partners are showing the characteristics of their crest. It makes sense. Yeah. I just wish they would explain it. 
Like someone come in there. Oh, bear in the, mind, we're on movie two of six. That is true. Somebody could ask this question next movie or movie after next, because you've already right. seen the next movie. Yeah. So either way, yeah, the the explanation of why they can digivolve into something beyond is it'd be like, it's kind of, okay, they can just do this now. It's like, okay, but you've also, got all this lore back here. How as, do you do it? <laughs> also, their partners have be- grown older and perhaps have more control over the abilities and maybe needed the crests in order to digivolve them. That is previous, true. but now no longer need them because they are older and more mature. Mm. Our Theories? Son. I have no idea if that's what it is. That's true. Or someone who got mentioned in the first movie is pulling strings. Willis? No. Mentioned. Willis? No. Jedi? Possibly. I don't know. Still going with Willis. Okay. Oh, yeah. Willis is the movie, definitely. Yeah, we'll he see the episode. so important to Digimon the movie. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. He's yeah. got to be involved somehow. Yeah, he pops up episode four. We are movie four. Yes. We haven't seen him yet. He might pop up. Not really. <laughs> I don't know. Either anyway. way. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my number four. Is the, the They don't explain the crest and they can evolve. She says we're nuts for, for focusing on this. And what you were, what were you expecting, uh, Dilit? What were you expecting? She says she's not sure. Boy, boy did you jump into the wrong podcast then. <laughs> I don't think she was happy with that particular comment. That's what you get for sticking your tongue out at her. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> my third dislike. Okay. We're still on to that. That. Meikuman's 180 degree turn. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I like that they pulled this thing on us to make you go, what? What's going on? Mm-hmm. On this cliffhanger of an ending. Yes. I appreciate that part. Yes. But here's the thing. There is, with the exception, we go from her pretty please face. Yes. To her vision of the black digi vice with the cross DNA. All of a sudden she's evil. Yeah. Why are you what what what's going on? I know that's part of the the shock value. Mhm. But here's the thing, that other character that we brought up, uh Himikawa, mhm. They have done a good job of making you question her loyalty up to this point. Mm-hmm. There is nothing about what Meikuman's doing. I mean, she at one point Meikuman even says, "I'm glad I'm friends with you guys." It's like yeah, you're you're just one of the team, Meikumon. Oh, now you're evil. Why? Why? I, I, this was just a. It's, this was like a. It's not that I'm asking why, because obviously mm-hmm. the why is going to be coming. Yes. What I want to know is, there's never they never gave a point where she was worried about all this stuff happening. She was just having a fun time with all her friends. They could have done something. I don't know with the with uh the 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 fight there where with Togemon fighting uh, Ogremon out mm-hmm. there by the lake where yeah. Togemon accidentally causes the helicopter to go down, mm-hmm. which I do love the fact that they actually showed collateral damage mm-hmm. that was awesome. Yeah, but uh, they could have had her shown us scenes of her worrying about I'm going to have to do that at one point, I, and this is all this could all turn south. I'm worried about hurting Mako because mm-hmm. it would make sense. They never even show you a visual of that being the issue. It's just she's happy go lucky throughout the whole thing. There's no, uh, there, there's nothing that make you think that maybe this that she's could make the decision to abandon her partner until she abandons her partner and the whole team and jumps into the distortion and disappears. There's nothing that gives you that feeling. It's just. She's going this direction. All of a sudden, she turned to 180 and is going back the other way. Mm. That's like, okay, could you give us some motivation for why this is happening? I mean, you've given every other character so much stinking motivation for why they do what they do. And then Meikuman just goes back the other way. It's like, okay. That's just weird. Yeah, 
I, w- I would point out because you know this is you know this is a six part film, yeah. so you know it's going to get explained. It's going to be Don't explained. Get me wrong. But in the course of just this one movie, I want at least some hints that she's going to she might want to abandon her trainer at some point. Yeah, she might feel it's the right thing to do or the best thing for her to do. Like I said, we get lots of hints at Himikawa mm-hmm. being what she's apparently going to be. Yeah, but we get nothing from Mekuma. She's looks like she's just going to be a happy member of the team, and it's all going to be happy go lucky up until she gets kidnapped, and then nothing about her being kidnapped we know yet. Yeah, causes her to want to make that hundred and eighty degree turn. Well, I do. I do want to point out one thing in Reunion, the first movie, when Meku and Meku Mon uh, first encounter um, Alpha Mon. Mm-hmm. But like there is like when there is that yeah there's a scene where she does go red yeah there is that to give you a hint that there's more to her yeah but in terms of character motivation yeah we never see her thinking maybe we need to maybe I need to be careful maybe so. now it could be that whatever the Digimon Emperor or mm-hmm. whomever that is yeah did to her while they while she was kidnapped in the mm-hmm. distortion caused her to change and yeah. we could that we'll find we can find that out in the next one yeah but it just feels like we she was heading straight this direction and she didn't make a 45 degree turn she didn't make a 90 degree turn she mm. made a 180 degree turn and was went from being one of the one of the good guys to being one of the bad guys mm-hmm. without much seeming that now admittedly it's meant to be a shock Mm-hmm. I will grant you. Yes. I just wish there was a little more lead up. Understood. You make me go, oh, I know what's going to happen. I don't want this to happen, but I have a feeling this is going to happen. Yeah. Oh, look, it happened. No, it's just like, okay, yeah, everything's going to, they're going to save her. And they're, and she's maybe, I, I even thought maybe that Meiku Mom was going to get her first Digivolve mm-hmm. in there to fight alongside uh, Rosemon and Vikemon. Mm-hmm. And that's not what happens. Okay, so yeah, it's not time for it yet. You're saving your digivolutions mm. for when they're appreciable. You don't want to take the spotlight away from Rosemont or Vikemont. Fair mm. enough. Mm. Oh, she's evil now. What? What happened? <laughs> Did I fall asleep? What's going on? It's... Movie's over. What happened? Mm. Okay. I think Kumon is evil now. Yeah. But, and it wasn't a dark digi evolution, which could have explained everything, right? Because we, you can, you see in the show when a dark digi evolution happens, how a character can go from being one thing to another, right? When, when you look at Agumon turning into Skull Greymon, right? You, that is lore built into the universe. And mm. if she had dark digi evolved, I wouldn't care. Yeah, because all that would be is somehow whatever. Uh, Digimon Emperor dude did cause her to Dark Digivolve into this vicious mode or whatever mm-hmm. the new name would be. Yeah. Like there is some difference, but it's more of a mode change. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm getting too bogged down <laughs> into stuff that's probably going to be explained in the next movie yeah. or in the movie after that more than likely. Right. Anyway. And also plus I... That's another part that's been slightly spoiled for me by doing research. Ah. Uh. I love doing research. It spoils the movies I'm watching. Yay! <laughs> anyway, that brings us to the end of another episode. We need to rate this thing. Yeah, what you rating it? Uh, there again, be like the the beginning of the film is kind of slow. It, it does. There again, they're using character development and they're taking the time to do that. And they're saying, be like, that's kind of a. It's like okay, you get a movie that went you know ninety to nothing, and then it kind of kind of drops in the drops mm-hmm. in the second gear. It's like and this it movie just, starts off in the filler episodes. It's like okay. pretty much, pretty much, and then you pick up and it gets you know better and better and better. And it's like boom, climax is like whoa, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, I have my theories. What's going on there again? I have seen the third film. And it's like oh, okay, that makes sense more. And it's like oh, okay, this is gonna get weirder and weirder. So there again, uh, with all that said, I'm definitely I, I'm still at a strong eight with this film. I love it. I love this film. To I mean, it's just amazing storytelling. It's yes, it does have a, a very slow beginning. It does have these little quirks here and there, uh, but I thoroughly enjoy. It. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. 
And I've watched the third one. The third one's good. I need to go back and rewatch it for the review, obviously. Right. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's definitely an eight for me. What's up? What's for you? I think I'm going to give it an eight also. Okay. It's uh, like, like we said, it starts slow. Mm hmm. Like it does feel, does feel like it starts in the filler episodes of the season. And then it starts finally picking up. It does make you, okay. Yeah. It, it's got a lot of good parts. It's a good adventure. And it's got a great cliffhanger that hopefully will turn when that cliffhanger is resolved, it will turn my, uh, dislike. My, so my, my, one, my, one of my dislikes around where yeah. I, I, it's not a big deal as it was before. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, I've not seen part three yet. I'm just literally going off of where part two ended. I'm still going, okay, this was sudden. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, I, I enjoyed the movie. I'm giving it an eight cause it's a fun movie. Which brings us to the end of this episode. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to give your rating too, Dila? Okay. She's giving it a 10. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, apparently, May Kumon was too cute. Okay. That's fair enough. Eh, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Anyway, uh, trivia for our next week's episode is, with the exception of TK and Kari, what are the names of the season two Digidestined? Okay. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Because I ha I suspect they are going to be, it's, that's going to be needed knowledge coming up. Possibly. About who they were, not, not who those characters were. I mm -hmm. mean, we already seen them appear to be killed in a kid's movie. Approximately. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, if you know that, Comment down below where we're, you're posting that tomorrow, right? I should be posting it tomorrow. Hopefully okay. this will work better so, than so when you last see the week's. So when you see the post on our Facebook page, comment down below. Indeed. And the first one to get it right gets points. Indeed. So uh, join us for that. In the meantime. What movie are we watching next? Next week. Yeah. What is the actual name of the third one? I know you said it was Confession. I'm yeah, going to double check. Yeah. Did you, Digimon Adventure Try Confession. Movie three. Also, I would like to point out on my discs, Agumon was on disc one, mm -hmm. and he was the main Digimon of that story. Yes, Gomamon Mon. and Palmon are on the disc for for this one. Yes, they were the main Digimon involved with this. Uh huh. Three has Patamon. Yeah, and TK. Yeah, and that one is Confession. So join us next week yeah. for Confession. Maybe you feel the need to confess something. I don't know. Hmm. And I I would I would say one I would say one thing. Make you what did you do? That's all I'm asking. What did you do? Or intention non intentionally do. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. But in the we'll find out later. Indeed. Yeah, in the meantime, this has been Drew. This is Jacob. And she says her name is Dila. And we'll catch you in the next frame. Don't eat the couch, Agumon. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast! Oh, boy! So where can they find you, Jacob? You can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. Also on Facebook at Jacob Daily Art Corner, where I try to draw each and every day. I don't get to it as often as I like, but uh, join me there. Also, you can find me on Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. On Twitter at Jacob Heron and Letterbox at Jacob Heron. So where can they find you, Drew? You can also follow me on Letterbox at GGeorge759, Facebook as Drew Dodgen, uh, my Facebook page where you can see pictures I've taken at Drew's Photo Bin. You can also follow me on Twitter at GGeorge759. You can email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at cast underscore cell. You can follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Cellcast Gaming. You can also follow us on YouTube at Cellcast. Listen to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and your favorite podcast directory. You can also listen to us on the Movie of the Week podcast with Jim Heron, where we talk about live action movies. No, you can't. And remember, Cell, Cell is a single, single L. L. What did
did a jelly donut ever do to you?